Good morning. Welcome again to our Sunday School Hour from Central Baptist Church in uh, Southington, Connecticut. And we're glad to have you all with us today. It's a real blessing to be here. And I hope that you are enjoying this beautiful day that God has given to us. And if you haven't got your Bibles, I'd like for you to go get them right now because we're going to be using them and we do every week. Um, before we begin, we're going to have, hear a song from uh, the Foster family and their cousins, the Matinees, and they're going to sing for us one of my favorite songs, Jesus Loves Me. And this is a song that I taught my children. Uh, I learned as a young girl myself one of the first songs, and it meant a lot to me to know that Jesus loves me. And my children, they, we even sang it uh, at their birth when they were born, both my son and, and my daughter, and then later my granddaughter. I was able to sing that for her when she was born. And I still sing it with her. It's a real joy to, to see and to know that Jesus still loves us. And here they are. And uh, listen as they sing and sing along with them if you know all the verses. Jesus loves me. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate the Fosters and the uh, Matinees doing that for us this week and uh, letting us know through a song that Jesus loves us. And we're going to be talking about that in our lesson today. And if you would open up your Bibles to Titus chapter 1, we're going to start there at first. And then I want to pray before we begin our lesson today. Our Heavenly Father, we do want to thank you for this opportunity to come and to present your word to these boys and girls and to moms and dads or whoever else might be listening. This is such an important lesson, Lord, that we uh, who know you and enjoy the fellowship of your love and compassion. And I pray for the, those that perhaps do not know you and do, do not know personally what a wonderful and mighty God you are and what a loving and merciful God you are. We thank you so much for this time. May the Holy Spirit be our teacher today. And we'll just give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know God is a mighty and powerful God? He, he created this whole universe, the sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, the flowers, the trees, the animals. He created you. He created me. And God did that because he loves to create. But when he created us, he created us for fellowship. And something happened. God, who is holy, and we want to remember that, God is holy, God uh, cannot tolerate sin. And he created us so that he could fellowship with us. But at the same time, something happened. Sin entered the world. And when sin entered the world, it separated us from God. And that's not something he wanted. But God cannot tolerate sin. There are some things that God cannot do, and we're going to talk about them today. One of the things that God cannot do is God cannot lie. He speaks the truth. He is a God of truth. And when God, uh, uh, because he is a holy God, he cannot take lying from us either or any sin in this world. And so we find that God can't take sin in the world. He can't take lying. That's a terrible sin to be. He's never unfair and God is never unkind. He has never done anything purposefully to hurt anyone. And God doesn't like it 
And yet at the same time, he still has a purpose for each one of us. The Lord tells us in his word that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So not only does God hate these things, it separates us from a loving God. And sometimes we don't really realize it, but it's so important. So number one, and I'm going to put the one up here to help us remember that there are at least five things that God cannot do. And the first one is he cannot lie. So the truth is the wages of our sin is death. And that's going to separate us from God forever. And God did not want that. The fact is, fact number two, the thing that God cannot do is God cannot allow sin into heaven. You can't go to heaven with sin in your heart. Heaven is a clean and pure place, a place where God dwells, a place where all that are in heaven want to have peace and joy and love without sickness or sin or any. He won't even allow even the tiniest little sin into heaven. You may think we have a little sin and a big sin, but all sin is sin to God. And therefore, when we die, if we don't have, if we have sin in our heart, our life, anything that's against God, then when we die, the Bible says the wages of that sin is death. The Lord Jesus was God's son, and he loves us so much. And God said, I cannot help but love you. God cannot help but loving us. That's the third thing that we want to look at today. The third thing is God cannot help loving us. Now, God cannot tolerate sin, so if we do something we shouldn't do, he will punish us. And that is because he loves us. It's not for any other reason. The Bible says he loved us first in 1 John 4:19. And he wants us to be holy like he is holy. Isn't it good news to know that God cannot lie? That's the first thing. And the second thing is that God will not allow sin into heaven. Wow, when I go to heaven, I don't want any sin there. I want to live a, I have a perfect place to live. And the third thing was that God cannot help loving us. Well, just like I was saying, God cannot let sin go unpunished. The Bible clearly tells us, and this is our verse for today, and I'm looking for it. Oh, it's, here. it's right here. Okay. God says that he commended his love. That word means, that long word means showed. He showed his love toward us. That means toward you and toward me. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. Some people think they can get to heaven just by being good. But the Bible says there's none good, no, not one. And our goodness is like filthy rags in God's sight. So therefore, we can't be good. And then some people think you can get to heaven by going to church or by joining a church. Now, those are good things. Yes, you should go to church. But that won't get you to heaven. And money won't get you to heaven, buying it. Earning it, working hard for it won't get you to heaven. Well, what are we going to do? God said, I have a solution. He gave his love. He showed us his love when he died for us. And I want to show you through the flannel graph just exactly the steps that it took. And, to, and I want you to think, where are you? There are two kinds of people in the world. There are saved and there are lost people. Saved people have re realized that their sins had to be punished and they needed to have forgiveness. And everything we learn is from the Bible. So I want to put this up here on the board so you can see the progression and the plan that God had for each one of us because everything comes from the Bible. So, there was a little baby born in Bethlehem, and his name was Jesus. God said 
that he was going to have him come and uh, be part 100% man, 100% God, and he was going to grow up without any sin. He was just like you and me. He, if he uh, hurt his elbow or bumped himself, he would, he would feel pain. The Bible tells us there was no bones broken in his body, but I'm sure he felt love. He felt all the emotions that you and I feel. Only God did not commit any sin. I think I needed to put number four up here, didn't I? That God cannot let sin go unpunished. And then that's why he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. Jesus was born to die for you and me and pay the wages of their sin that is due to God. And he took all of our sin upon him. Every lie that we ever told, he was all of the things that we did that were unfair and anything that we did or said that was unkind to anyone, God took all of those sins, my sin, your sin, upon the cross when he died. But he couldn't just stay on the cross. The Bible tells us that in order for us to be his child, we, he had to raise from the dead. Aren't you glad that Jesus rose from the dead? We celebrated Easter just a little bit ago. And when Jesus rose from the dead, that gave him power to save you and me and raise us so, we, so that when we die, we can get to heaven. Well, there's only one thing lacking for number five that God said he couldn't do is that he cannot forgive your sin unless you receive the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. God will remember the first thing. God said he couldn't lie. The Bible verse in Titus chapter 1, verse 2, reads like this. It says, In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began. God made that promise even before he created the world. And so therefore you and I realize that now we have no choice. We have no way to get to heaven unless we receive the Lord Jesus as our Savior. And here is an illustration of a little boy. And what is he doing? Can you tell me? He's kneeling and he's praying. He's showing himself humble before God. And the Bible tells us, and I want you to follow along with me in your Bibles too, in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, I did that when I was nine years old. I believed that the Lord Jesus died on the cross to save me from my sins, paid for all my sin debt. I believed it, and then I called upon the Lord because the Bible says, with the heart man believeth, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. See, there's no difference. Today, there's uh, different kinds of people in the world. There's different ages of people. It doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. You have to believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, that he died on the cross to save you personally from your sin. And then the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Once you've made that decision, then heaven is your home. You can go to a place where there is no sin, no problems, because God showed us his love. He commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for you. And I even put my name right there in my Bible. I have it written that if Mrs. McKeever shall call upon the name of the Lord, I shall be saved. And you can put your name there too if you're saved. And if you want to be saved, then all you have to do is pray and ask the Lord to do that. I hope you will do that. These five things that God cannot do, I'm going to go over them one more time because I want you to remember them. You can't see them if I put them up there. But God cannot let sin go unpunished. That was number four. 
Let's start with number one. Uh, okay, I've got them out of order here. First of all, God cannot lie. Aren't you glad that God cannot lie? God cannot help. Oh, God cannot allow sin in heaven. And I'm glad that we've got a wonderful place to go to in heaven that has no sin, no sickness. And then God cannot help loving you. He loves you. And no matter if you're good or you're bad, God still loves you. Of course, he wants you to say you're sorry. My granddaughter, uh, she lied to me about something. And then when uh, her mother corrected her on it and she came to me and, and she said, no, no, I'm sorry. And I said, why are you sorry, Carolee? And she said, I lied, I lied. So what did I do? I forgave her. And I gave her a big hug and it meant a lot to me. And you know, when you receive Jesus as your Savior and you become his child, God will take all, he's already taken all the punishment. And so therefore it's taken care of, isn't it? So he'll just put his arms around you and he'll love you and forgive you of your sin uh, if you're his child. And if you're not, then you should be or want to be. I hope you will want to be today. So let's close our lesson in uh, prayer today. And now think about it. I really want you to consider it. If you've never received Christ as your Savior, won't you do it today? And if you have, I want you to thank Him because your testimony means so much to God and He wants to use you to tell somebody else so that they'll know that God loves them and that they can go to heaven if they'll just repent of their sin and receive Him as Savior. So let's go to the Lord in prayer now. Our Heavenly Father, as we close this lesson in prayer, we, we come to you with humble hearts, just thanking you and praising you for the sacrifice that you made of giving your only begotten Son to die on the cross to save us from our sin. And Lord, if there's one girl or one boy listening to my voice today and they've never received you as their Savior, I pray that they'll do it right now They'll just say, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sin. And I know that you love me and you died for me. And I want you to be my Savior and come into my heart and life and save me. I hope in, that you made that prayer. But if you are saved, I pray that you'll be willing to let God use you to be a testimony to someone else. And we'll give God all the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for being with us today. And I hope and pray that uh, you will consider uh, maybe emailing us at mail at centralbaptistchurch.net and uh, let us know. I've got a bookmark with all the five points on it that I'd like to send to you in the mail if you'll just put your address in there and your name so that I can do that. Thank you for being with us and God bless. Goodbye till next week.